Oh, hey man, and welcome to my guide. Today we're gonna be killing General Grador, and here's a secret. It's easy. So here's the only things that you absolutely need. You have to have 70 strength, otherwise you can't get into the Bandos section of the God Wars dungeon. You've also at least gotta do part of the Troll Stronghold quest, but I'm just gonna be real with you, it's not that hard. Just, just do the frickin' quest. Now, a better way to get there is to actually use Gommel's Hill, and you can technically do it with just the easy tier of combat achievements, but I'd recommend at least having the hard tier done for unlimited teleports to the God Wars dungeon. The last hard requirement for this particular method is the Bow of Ferdinand, or the Bofa, and you do need it, there is not a substitute. Its attack range combined with its 4 tick speed is what makes this method work. If you come here with a crossbow, you can certainly do it a different way, but if you try this with a crossbow, you're going to have a bad time. I'm also going to list the crystal armor set as a requirement because it provides such a large DPS and accuracy boost to the Bofa, and the faster the boss dies, the less damage you take. If you want to come here with carols in a Bofa, you can technically do it, but I would advise against it. Alright, now that we got that shit out of the way, I'll show you what I'm working with, and if you're a main account, first of all, fuck you. Just kidding. If you lack imagination, just go ahead and copy my setup, I found it worked pretty well. If you're an Iron Man, I can relate, I'll recommend some downgrades, but at the end of the day, we're really just doing the best we can. If you got the crystal armor and the Bofa, you did the hard part, congratulations. So here's what I'm rocking, and it works out pretty well for me, man. I'm an average PVMer, and I can handle 20 kill trips. Trips. So you can swap a few things around and the first slots we'll talk about are the cape, the arrows or the pocket slot, I don't really know what to call it, wherever my blessing is, the gloves, and the boots. In an ideal world, in those four slots, you're going to have one Zamorak item and one Bandos item. An ancient item is totally optional, I choose to bank at next, that just makes my life a little bit easier I found, so I happen to be able to make it work, so that's why I do that. An important note is that the Barrow's Gloves are not that much better than God Dehyde Bracers. So if you have to choose between keeping a Zamorak item in your inventory, or downgrading slightly from Barrow's Gloves, we're talking about 1 or 2 range accuracy, it will always be better to wear the Zamorak Bracers. I bring an Anguish because I happen to have one. If you just have a Fury, don't fucking overthink it, it's gonna be fine. Don't let that be the barrier to keep you from coming here. I just have an Archer's Ring in my ring slot because Demonic Gorillas fucking hate me and I've only ever gotten one Zenite. In my glove slot, since I have the two God Protections taken care of with my Cape and my Blessing, there's no reason for me to use anything other than Barrow's Gloves. In my inventory, I bring two Divine Range Pots, two Ceridomen Brews, and six Super Restores. I find that to be a pretty good balance, but go ahead and swap that up as you see fit. I bring Aram's Hood, Aram's Top, and Aram's Bottom along with an Ancient Staff, and I do switch back to my Mage Arena 2 Cape, as I tend to heal most of my HP back up with Blood Barrage. Do you need all the switches? Absolutely not. You can probably leave the Hood at home, and the Staff is really only nice if you care about the auto-casting. It does give you a little bit of Mage Accuracy, but it's not a deal breaker. I do bring the Assembler as a switch before we even enter the boss room, and I bring the Blowpipe just for a few extra heals. The rest of my inventory, I use hard food. I have anglers, so I use anglers. If you don't, just bring sharks, it's not the end of the world. And in my rune pouch, you will see runes for Blood Barrage, as I mentioned earlier. You can probably do this with Blood Blitz, but you won't have as many kills per trip. That's why I didn't list it as a hard requirement, but if I'm honest, to be able to get into the 20 kill trip range, you probably need Blood Barrage. Plus, the mage minion hits like a fucking truck, and the higher your mage level, the higher your mage defense. I'm not really a plugins guy, so it pains me to say that I use ground markers for this activity. I have nothing against people that mark tiles, I just think it looks like shit, it's not really my cup of tea. But for this method, it's almost necessary. So I'll detach the camera and kind of show you the room, but you're going to learn more from seeing me do it rather than walking you through this way. Essentially, all we're doing is staying in line with these tiles here, and we are creating a red X by left-clicking the door or the altar, hence the name of the method, the altar door. When we are moving towards the altar, we attack from the red tiles, and when we are moving towards the door, we attack from the green tiles. You have to stay in a very particular rhythm, you have to attack from these tiles, and if you do it correctly, General Grador will not hit you. If you eat food or fall out of rhythm, you will have to reset, and I will do my best to show you how to do that as we go. We're gonna go in for a live kill, so I think it's important for transparency for me to show you my stats now. I do have 99 range and 99 mage, but when I grinded this the first time, I did not. I also had lower defense at the time, so take that for what it is. All right, so let's do a live kill here. Since this is my take on the altar door method, I'll show you exactly how I do it. I like to start out by sipping a brew and then a restore. 
I'll then sip a divine and eat an angler. And that seems like a lot of prep, but it gives us the most amount of HP possible before we go in the room. Make sure your run is on and you have your quick prayers set up correctly. You will use these after the first kill. You can put steel skin on if you're feeling nervous. The minions do hit kind of like a fucking truck. So I would recommend it if you're new. Make sure you put on your Avas if you're using your God Cape as your God item. I've been guilty of that a bunch of times, so we'll go ahead and put that on. And when you enter the room, you want Protect from Melee and Eagle Eye in at minimum. I would recommend Steel Skin. I like to immediately attack the boss and then head over towards the altar. Once you're at the altar, you wait for him to punch you in the face and then you click the door. That brings you to the first green tile where you attack and immediately click the next tile. So I'm gonna show you some resets right off the bat here. I took a little bit too long there. That's why I left my melee prayer up and he attacked again. He should not attack again. If that happens, go back to the altar and just try and set it up again. So here we go. We're going to attack and then click the next tile. And if we do it correctly here, he does not attack us. That means we did a good thing. Now I'll show you the other way to reset. I'm going to hang out here a little too long and he attacks. And this one is more risky. I'd recommend resetting at the altar. If you time it perfectly, you will pass through him again and you'll be all set. We'll check to make sure we're in rhythm and it wasn't just luck because we passed through and he doesn't attack. So on the next kill, I won't fall out of rhythm. I just wanted to show you very quickly two ways that you can reset if you fall out. Once he goes down, don't run all the way back to the altar like I did. I'm just a fucking silly goose, I guess. Get out your blowpipe, launch a couple of specs, get some of that HP back, and you're really just going to look to blowpipe the mage boy down. At this point, you want to make sure your health is A-OK, -okay, and then you can look at the other two minions. If you want, you can flick one of them in between mage attacks, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm feeling particularly lazy. We'll get the mage gear on, and it looks like they have a pretty easy off tick going. If they are same tick, just try and run away from the melee and get them to attack you after the ranger has... And if you can get them next to each other and get in a little rhythm here, see, melee, range, melee, range. As soon as I see that melee attack, I switch to range. And if you get good at this, I say as I get hit, then you'll take no damage and you will absolutely profit food. So there you go. Our HP situation is in a pretty good spot. Take off your run. And since I'm out of prayer, I'm going to use the altar. You can do that once every 10 minutes for free prayer. Now that we got our prayer situated, we walk over here, cool as a cucumber, pick up our spoils. Oh, lovely, 1.4k, love to see it, another 1.4k. Make an absolute bank here, this video. Every kill after the first one, you start from the south side, and you won't have to worry about a melee attack since he's not going to hit us once. You want to make sure you're pretty close to full HP. Since I had a Divine Pot active, I went ahead and overhealed with an Angler. And it is important to be full HP or even over because you can take a lot of damage here very fast. So Quick Prayer is on. As soon as he spawns in, attack, click Altar. And then it's just attack, next move. Attack, next move. Attack, next move. And the process repeats. You know, it takes a little bit of coordination to time it up as you're on the exact tile you need to attack him and then click the next one but it's it's really not that difficult i'm not a top tier pvmer and i've figured it out so i mean i believe in you man i'm gonna do my best to not let him hit us this entire kill just so you can see what that looks like and it is worth noting that every time i'm headed towards the altar i click the altar that's for no reason other than the altar is a big target to click and it just takes a little bit of pressure off me the only time you have to click the altar is right here the very first time as you're passing through. You can click the floor after that. I just choose to click the altar. Now the door is a little bit different. You still have to do it on the first one, but if you click it again, you're gonna start running towards the door. So don't, don't do that. And if you look at our HP, we're actually a little bit low. We started this kill at, I think, 108 HP, and we were down below 30. So, you know, at no fault of ours, we took a lot of damage. And this should be pretty interesting because we're low HP here. Let's kind of see the power of Blood Barrage here. So here we go. We, oh, oh, nice. We got a big hit on us too. So from here, I'm going to try to do my best work in terms of prayer flicking. I'm going to try and take no damage from the minions. And we'll basically get up to full HP from this, right? And typically you won't get as low as I did. If you have 90 plus ranged and the full crystal armor with the Bofa, 
Even though the crystal armor is made of fucking paper in terms of defense, you typically will down him a lot faster than a minute, I'd say somewhere around 40 seconds, and thus you'll take a lot less damage. So there we go, we're almost 90 HP just from the blood barrage. Pretty nice. So since I did a really terrible job of managing my run energy, we have to leave. And this is a good time to point out, right? You could leave an angler at home or leave Aram's hood at home and bring that stamina pot just to extend your trip if you really wanted to. So there you go, man. There's my take on the altered door method. I hope it helps you out. If it does, then consider liking the video. Or maybe if you like hearing from me, subscribe to the channel. I do have an Iron Man series, and I'll link that playlist to this video. And special thanks to the channel members. I'll put their names on the screen now. Holy shit, there's a lot of you this month. We got Melda, UIM Dad, Jet, Goofy's Went, Dustus, Sean of Iron, Markleton, Trav Doc, Pablo Vera, Nachito, Iron Stacks, That's Solid, Briat Gidry, Mortal Monka, Pyro, Dudas Priest, Exgillus, Josh Midgley, Neckbeard, Pluckable, Ryan Foster, Jack of All Trades, Kevin P, Sewer Slidal, Muffin, Carl Kim, Zappy Euphoria, It's Fox, Dons, Saib, V Fox, Run DMC Lovato, Widow's Iron, and Dual Talents. Thank you all so much for your continued support, and it means the absolute world to me. These videos truly would not be possible without you folks. Cheers to you.